Hey, this is Alina from collective-evolution.com. Uh, I want to make a vlog today about self-consciousness because I feel this is something practically everyone is struggling with, including myself. That's been a big challenge in my life. It's very easy to see how this issue has become so big in the world because all you hear when you open the TV is what uh, product can make you more beautiful or how to act to feel more, uh, to be more accepted by the world, how to be. Basically, there's like a prescribed way to be and to look that's sold to us on a daily basis. And we have a world that's basically everyone is to some extent buying into it because everyone has, I don't want to say everyone, but we're kind of conditioned to have this fear or this insecurity about ourselves that we just, we need to fit to, into a certain standard to be accepted and to accept ourselves. But I've personally found some very useful tips and insights that have personally helped me in overcoming the feeling of self-consciousness, whatever it arises, so I can remind myself of what's truly important and what is real. Because ultimately, you end up realizing that all the thoughts of, oh, what will this person think about me? How do I look right now? Am I saying the right thing? All of those thoughts, they're not real. They're just a barrier, a blockage that kind of, it makes it, it's basically an illusion. Because when you think about it, how you look, the way you appear, the way you want to be perceived, it's really just stories in your mind that is preventing you from being the only thing that is true and real, and it is yourself, the truest version of yourself. So the way I came to that realization is basically after years and years of going through self-consciousness myself. And for me, it all started around high school. Actually, when I started high school. And you know, when you grow into a teenager, that's kind of like when the media kicks in. And you start to think, oh, I need to wear this or be this to be cool. And that's when, you know, the popular cliques kind of form. And I was still in my childlike, careless state. But my friends kind of decided to just leave me and go with the cool kid. So I ended up alone. And that's when I decided to react in a way that I believed, oh, myself wasn't good enough. So a couple years later, I decided to basically reinvent myself in a way that wasn't true to myself. So I tried to, you know, start wearing the makeup and wearing the right clothes, and I fell into that whole belief system that you need to fit a certain mold to be accepted. And as much as I could blame my friends for leaving me or blame the media for, you know, the influence it had on me, ultimately, I think... A very important thing we have to realize is not to feel victim to those experiences. Yes, there is the bullies, there is the button pushers, but ultimately the buttons are ours. Ultimately it is us who adopt these beliefs and it is our responsibility to let them go. And that is the most empowering realization I've done. I came to was that, to not feel like a victim to it and to understand that I can create my own reality by letting go of the perceptions that no longer serve me and simply, you know, peeling off the layers until I find who I truly am. Now, what has really liberated me is to understand that the outer shell that is my body is just that, an outer shell. It is not who I truly am. I like to compare the body as a vehicle. Our body is the vehicle that we use to experience this human experience. Now imagine if we were just busy in our driveway, painting it over and over again, polishing it, only taking care of making sure it shines bright, but then we never take it out to experience. Or while we take it out, we still, you know, look outside the window and try to make sure, you know, there's no scratches in anything and everything. And that is such a limited and heavy way to live when you just identify yourself with how you look you then don't experience anymore because you deny the being that's inside of you, the driver inside the vehicle that's here to ride the damn vehicle and to experience life. So it is such a freedom when you detach from this importance to looks and you start experiencing the moment, living your life, tasting this human experience. That's what we're here for. The body is here to allow us to do that. So let's ex embrace it. It doesn't matter how it looks. It is here, you can feel, you can taste, you can breathe. We're here to enjoy that. And not and that's basically another thing that helps me. Whenever the you know, self-conscious thoughts arrive, like, how does that make me feel? Does that free me or does that enslave me and does that limit me? And then I can choose. 
And the more you choose, the more you disempower the fear-based thoughts or the insecurities, and you choose freedom, you choose just to be here and now and to enjoy the experience, the easier it gets to get beat in that place and to, you know, live in truth and not in illusion. You know, a lot of people say, find the things that you like about yourself and that's going to make you feel better. Find the, you know, do you like your eyes? Do you like your hair? And I've tried all that. I mean, sure, there's this maybe some things that I like, but then I'm going to start focusing on those and trying to build up my self-esteem by, you know, focusing, oh, I think I have, you know, uh, great legs, for example. It's not about finding the external, external factors that can then make you feel better. This is, again, only a distraction, keeping you on focusing on the package around your true self. And this is where we want to get to. Fully unleashing who we truly are and getting to know who we are. Every concept of beauty, of what you're supposed to look like or how you're supposed to act, you know, even the manners. I'm not saying it, we need to be impolite. But, you know, the way we need to do all the small talk and not go too deep and just... You know, always say the right thing. I personally think that makes a boring world. Because it suppresses our uniqueness, our individuality. What we're here to share is our true colors, our, our true colors, our uniqueness. And to just be stuck in those ideals, these, these um, concepts of what you're supposed to be, it, these are just made up anyways. It's made up. That's what we need to understand. Every standard that you see, it's a standard set up by someone who just decided to say, oh, you know what, that's going to be the correct way to be and screw all the rest. So I think a big part of being the change we wish to see in the world is that the revolution is to be who we are because who we are is not has nothing to do really with the world that we're experiencing right now. The world we're experiencing right now is a creation. It's made up mostly to keep us in line and repress uniqueness. So ultimately, we have the choice. We either choose to remain in this old paradigm, fear-based paradigm of, you know, only caring about the package and not the quality of the experience inside the package, um, you know, or liberating yourself from all of that and remembering who we truly are underneath and just reconnecting with that. And by the way, our inner completeness, inner peace is already there. It's simply clouded by all these thoughts, these judgments, and this indoctrination. So we have the choice. We either keep the baggage or we let it go and start fresh and just, you know, wake up to who we are. If you're struggling with self-consciousness, I hope that this video was of help to you. I know that these realizations have been very powerful in my own experience. Uh, so if you did like the video, well, click like. Uh, if you have any personal insights or experiences to share about the issue, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to We Are Change and Collective Evolution. And yeah, have a good day. Humanity or the world one thing, what would it be? And I said, well, um... Um... What I would tell the world? I would say... Uh, this question by Andrew Dimitar pretty much breaks it down and he says, How do you stay motivated in the fight? I've been consciously losing the battle as of late. I feel that my efforts...